Welcome back to my channel. Sorry it's been so long since the last video. Just had a ton of stuff going on, about to have a baby, so it's gonna be even more busy. Recently, a friend of mine who I do some work with uh, asked me about my rig. Um, more specifically asked, why do you have a rig and what is it even good for? It seems like most of it's just aesthetics and it looks cool. And to be honest, it does look cool. And you know, some clients might even see your, that a, a rig that you have, um, you know, with a mat box, specifically a, ha a handle and a follow focus. They might see that and say, "Oh, he looks legit." And there is an element of that. Sadly, it doesn't actually affect the camera necessarily or the or the quality of the video per, per se. But there are some useful features, and I'm going to tell you what those features are for me. I'm going to tell you why I bought this these specific things and um give you give you a, a an overview of yeah a, a mirrorless rig that i use with my sony a7r by the way i'm shooting on my new sigma art 1.4 35 millimeter lens as well as my new a6600 um, so i'll do a review on those soon as well um, but let's jump into my rig like i said a lot of people ask you know why do you even why do you do that it just is it just for looks um it, you know, is it just to, to make it look cool? It does look cool, I will admit. But no, there's actually a lot more utility to it than, than meets the eye. So I'm gonna start off with, we're, we're just gonna build through the rig and I'll show you all, all the, the components. And I will also put links down in the description below so you can take a look at those. Those would help my channel out a lot if you use those to buy anything. So thank you in advance if you do. And thank you for watching. So I'm going to start off. I have several different sets of rails. There are 15 millimeter rails, which I have, and there are also, I think, 19 millimeter rail options for larger setups, heavier setups. I use the 15 millimeter because they're pretty universal. To be honest, rails are rails. Uh, there are definitely heavier ones and lighter ones. Heavier ones are cheaper, lighter ones are more expensive. So go with what price point works for you. Uh, but lighter is always better when it comes to a heavy rig because you're going to be building this out and it's going to get heavy. So lighter is generally better. I have small rig. These are 12 inch rails. Really like them. Most of my stuff is small rig equipment because they just make a good product for a good price point for most people, most budget shooters. Um, so I start with my rails and I have this Fotka, Fotka, Fotka DP500 uh, universal mount. So I shouldn't say universal. It comes with a, it comes with a base plate. So this is a nice quick release mounting plate with the rail mounts on the bottom, as well as I found this. I bought this specific mount, camera mount, because it has a riser where you can actually raise and lower. I don't know if you can see that, but you can lift the camera up off the rail um, probably by about uh, three quarters of an inch max. But this is handy because a mirrorless camera with the lens on it is not quite high enough to reach the center of the matte box at its lowest point. So you, you actually need to buy something that will raise your rig a little bit. Um, I have another one here that I don't use. I bought this before I got this one, found out that I needed the riser. I bought this because this is a nice low profile one. It sits really close to the rails. Um, you can mount your camera. It, it makes the, the entire rig a little more compact, which is really nice, but I cannot use it with my mirrorless. I can use it with a larger camera, probably with a, a black magic or a red or something. But this is a nice one. Also small rig, really great product. Grips on the on the top and the bottom. So if you want to, you know, either way you mount it, it'll work. And has quarter 20 threads everywhere. So you can mount a, a friction arm anywhere or anything with a quarter 20 thread. Uh, so which is, that's a really nice feature. So back to this rig, I'm gonna actually bring it down because I have been using it at its lowest for some reason. I thought I was using it raised, but I guess I'm not. So. 
So that's my release plate. Um, next component. Also the release plate, plate does have a front mount for any uh, lens support. So if you're using like a 7200 uh, 1.2.8 lens, you know, with the lens mounting ring, you can mount it there as well as the base plate. So we'll start with this. Um, next we'll go to this. This is technically three pieces, four pieces in one. So this is the plate that comes with the Fotka DP500 mounting and quick release plate. This is the actual plate that goes on it, threads into the bottom of my small rig threads into the bottom of my small rig cage. This is specifically for the Sony A7, A7S, A7III, A7R uh, line. Um, fits those all very nicely. You thread your camera right into there, and it's awesome. Camera sits in here. I'm not using it because I'm shooting both angles today on the gear and on there, so camera's not in here, but let's go ahead and mount this. Um, on top, but before I get to that, uh, on top, I have a nice rubber grip, which is also a small rig. I don't know, probably $40 grip, $30 grip. Um, hex key tightening system for all of this stuff, except for your threads down here. Those are just a flat head. Um, so this is what I put my camera in. And the reason I put my camera in this and not directly on the plate is because I want to mount a handle. The only way to mount a handle is if you have a way, a place to mount it above the camera. You could get a hot shoe or a cold shoe camera handle, um, but I, I don't necessarily like to pull the weight of my actual camera up with the rig behind, underneath it. I like to pull the entire weight of the rig all connected to the handle instead of the camera as, as the middle piece. And then on the front here, I have a small rig swiveling uh, monitor mount, uh, which has really nice, cool little piece. I think it's like 20 bucks. And it mounts right there on, on the front or honestly anywhere that you have uh, two quarter 20 thread holes, you could mount it on the sides, anywhere really. I put it on the front, works great. So let's mount this on here. And we'll lock it in. Awesome, so camera goes in there, handle right there, great. Next up, follow focus, let's go to the follow focus. Uh, this is Film City HS2 follow focus. Uh, the reason I went with this and not the Fotka was this had great reviews and it was cheaper and still made of the same materials. So this is like a an anodized something, I don't know but it's really a, a solid piece. It's, it's big, it's nice and big. It's got really smooth motion. You can reverse the gear. So if you're, um, if it doesn't necessarily fit on here and you need to push this forward and have the gear on the back, you can reverse the gear just by unscrewing this guy, unscrewing this guy, popping it there. Either way, and you can mount it reverse side too on, on either side. So it's really easy to use. You can adjust, uh, you know, your points, your pull, your focus pulling points. So that, you know, you don't go farther than that, farther than that. Awesome. Love that. Um, this is actually one of the pieces that I use the least with my rig, only because I don't do shoots where I'm stationary and need to pull on a scene. I don't use it yet. I might in the future, I'm not sure, but this is still a great piece to have because it, it takes away, you don't need to reach in and touch the actual lens to focus. You can do that from the side and it works really well. So let's mount that on here. All right, so now we have cage, follow focus, plate, rails. Let's go to our matte box. This is the Fotka DP500 matte box. So same series as the base plate. This is a great, great matte box for the price. You get your barn doors, top, side, top and sides, as well as it's a swinging, swinging. Well, I'll show you, yeah, there we go. It'll swing open once you mount it on the rails. Swing closed so you can easily swap out lenses. Also has two four x four filter slots right here that come out so you can buy nice filters, you know, a good graduated ND filter, throw it in there. 
boom, easy filtering. So you don't need to attach it to your lens. So this just slides right on the front. And then lock it down into place. There we go, starting to look like a rig. Next up, and I have my audio unit here for a reason, I'll tell you in a minute. Next up is this, the Camvate. Um, I don't even know what model this is. This is like the third battery V-mount base plate that I've bought and tried out. And this one finally fits a V-mount battery. There, there are a few that, and in fact, I think it's the Fotka um, base plate that does not fit a V-mount battery. It, it'll slide down, but it will not lock in. So I ran into the problem of the battery coming, coming loose, disconnected, and everything powers down. That just won't work during a shoot. So I got rid of that, finally found this one. This works with the V-mount battery, works great, has plenty of power output, it's got one for your camera, monitor, has an extra USB out and a D-tap, which is awesome. So I'm running my Sony uh, fake battery, dummy battery into the camera. So that's not like ideal, I'd love it if it just powered the camera, not via open door battery compartment, but it works. So this slides right on and I don't have the V-mount because I'm actually using it for the light over here as well. So my battery is being used, but we'll still mount this. And boom, battery goes on there. This goes up into your camera, done. Also another nice little piece from Fotka. I think this came with the plate. This is also uh, a lens support if you have a large lens um, that you need to if it's just too top heavy, front heavy, you know, and the lens is sagging down into the, you don't want your matte box holding that up. So they give you an extra little lens support. I haven't used it, I don't have a lens that big, but it's nice that it's there if I need it. Okay, um, lastly, well almost lastly, is my monitor. So this is a cheap monitor, I throw this thing, this is just junk, literally. Lilliput bought this years ago, strictly as something for focus uh, and and a larger screen than right here. Also, I can't really see that screen on my camera if there's a battery plate right here. And so this is strictly for focus. I don't rely on this for white balance or exposure or anything like that at all because it's just not accurate and it's not very bright as well, but still usable. And once I get a better one, until I get a better one, this is what this is what it is. Boom. So we have HDMI, goes right in here. And there's your basic rig. The last thing I would say is get a friction arm. You can put this friction arm any any available mounting spot. And I would mount either a microphone, an audio unit, um, or, or anything else that you might need with your rig. So for, in this case, I, could, I can mount this here. I mean, it looks stupid, I just threw it anywhere. This looks terrible. Um, but, you know, I could mount here, put a shotgun mic here. Um, you know, maybe I'd pull it in tighter to the, to the actual rig. But yeah, that's the basics of my rig. Now let me take you through the actual practical utility of each element of this rig. So it looks cool, yeah, it looks really cool. Number one, the biggest element would be extra, extra long power. So when you add a, a V-mount battery, mine is a 190 kilowatt hour or whatever, and it lasts forever. I can run it on the lights for several hours and throw it on here and still have tons of, tons of power to power both uh, monitor and camera and even my audio unit for I could do probably two full days of shooting and be okay on that battery. So that's a big thing is, is having sufficient power for all of your devices for a long period of time. If you're out in the field and you can't be swapping out batteries every hour, every two hours, this is the way to go. Um, secondly, handheld shooting, when you're holding your camera directly in your, in your hand, of course, you're gonna notice all the jitters that you don't see on a two inch, three inch screen. You're gonna load it up in Premiere, you're gonna load it up on your computer and find out that it's really shaky and almost unusable. What this does is it adds a lot of weight 
and your center of gravity is no longer right there on the camera. It's, you know, all your weight is down here, so it just swings and it really smooths out your handheld stuff and actually gives it kind of a cinematic handheld feel. And you can, you know, use it two hands. I should get a, a side handle. That would be really nice, but it really helps your handheld shooting and looks makes it look more intentional. So that's another feature of the overall weight of the rig. Um, of course, then I already mentioned the follow focus, what that does for you. That's a nice extra thing to have. And this one's a really smooth one. I like that. And you can also mark it up with uh, dry erase markers if you have like more than two points, A and B. So that's a nice thing. Then finally, the matte box. What, what really looks cool is the matte box. And this is the one that people are like, why the heck does that, what is that? And what, is it, what does it do for you? Why even buy that? Is that a waste of money? Well, in my instance, I shoot a lot of outdoor landscape stuff, a lot of direct sunlight stuff. And basically what this is doing is this is a diffuser. Um, uh, anything black is going to diffuse the light coming into the lens. Whereas if this was white, it would, it would bounce off. It would refract the light and, and um, cause more light to come into the lens, thus kind of washing out your picture, um, inaccurate colors when you go in loaded into Premiere. So this actually is a useful tool in that it eliminates the amount of light coming into your lens. Also, it also eliminates lens flare, which also, you know, if you have lens flare and you want to see some beautiful green and blues and reds out in the landscape, you know, you want to be able to see those colors. You don't want a lens flare messing up your colors and messing up your shot. So that's what the matte box does as well again as the filters. Um, and that's, that's, I wouldn't say that's a necessary piece. If you're shooting indoor um, interviews, I wouldn't get a matte box. I don't think you'd need it. But if you're shooting a lot of light coming into your, shooting in settings where there's a lot of light coming towards your lens, a matte box is a good tool for that. So overall, and then of course external model, monitor. Overall, this rig, this rig is about six to eight hundred dollars and it can be worth it if if you've got enough work that requires those specific things that they help you with. So like I said, outdoor landscapes, it's great to have a map box. This I'm going to eventually get, you know, a Shogun or a, an Atomos recorder and It'll be great on color and I can record straight here instead of trying to reach in here and push record. So there's lots of pros and cons. Of course, it's an extra six to 800 bucks that you're spending that you're probably not gonna use all the time. Uh, but that's, that's the whole thing. Like the whole point is if you're interested in getting a rig, wondering why um, a rig is, use, is a rig useful or is it just purely for looks? It is useful, it does look cool. But that's the reasons I bought it and use it. And so decide for yourself if you need it, if you don't need it. Also, please check out the links below if you're interested in any of these pieces and follow those links. It will help me out a lot. And thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.